Hello everyone, in this video I explain a standing wave experiment. Actually, we find the relation between the wavelength of a standing wave formed in a string and the tension in that string. Also, we find the value of linear mass density of the string. Let us restart. The apparatus that we need is a string, bully, hanger, its mass is 20 gram. Mass, different mass, each one is 20 gram. Indicator, two indicators, stick ruler, and frequency oscillator. Actually, this is any machine. We know it's a frequency. The frequency of that machine is 45 hertz. Let us restart. So, here we have standing waves. Let us we know what we mean by standing waves and what is the relation between standing waves and the tension in the string. What is the standing wave? Standing wave, it is just one wave reflected back. Form two waves have the same frequency and the same wavelength and the phase difference is 180, they are antiphase, opposite to each other. They form points which have minimum displacement called nodes. Nodes. And points have maximum displacements called antinodes. This is complete wave. So the length between the three nodes is one lambda. So the distance between two successive nodes is just half lambda. So the distance between two nodes is half lambda. So lambda equals the two multiplied by the distance between the two nodes. So this is the first thing about the standing waves. And mu, we have this relation. V equals the square root of t over mu. What is t? It is the tension in the string. Mu, actually, it is the linear mass density of string. So, mu, it is the mass of a string per unit length. So, mu, it is the mass per unit length. So, the mass is in kilogram and the length in meter. So, the unit of mu is kilogram per meter. Now, in this relation, we're squaring both sides. V squared equals T over mu. We know that V equals lambda times F. Lambda is the wavelength and F is the frequency. So it's equal to lambda squared F squared. First of all, we have a relation between the tension and the wavelength of the standing wave. This is direct relation from this. This is the tension and this is lambda squared. If the frequency is constant and the mu is constant, so lambda is squared proportional to the tension. Lambda, it's 2D. So also 2D squared. So from this we can say also D squared proportional to the tension. So the distance between two nodes will be increases as the mass increases, as the tension increases. Tension equals mg. m, it is the mass, and g is acceleration to gravity, which approximately equals 10 meters per second squared. So the distance between the distance between two successive nodes, we expect that that distance will be increases as the tension increases, as the mass increases. Now, we rearrange this formula, so we found that T over mu equals lambda squared F squared. Rearrange this equation to get mu. So mu equals T over lambda squared F squared. So this is the relation between mu, T, lambda squared, and F squared. If we plot the relation between lambda squared and T, so this is lambda squared and this is t. 
we will get a straight line. So we will get a straight line passes through the origin. So this is the slope of this one here. The slope equals lambda squared over t. So this is the slope of the graph. So t over lambda squared, it's one over the slope. So mu equals one over the slope multiply one over f squared. So finally, this is the relation. So mu equals one over the slope multiply one over f squared. So this is the relation between mu and the slope. So what we do now, we do the experiment and we, fi we, we, we find the relation between lambda squared and t. We draw the graph and we find the slope. From the slope, we can get mu. Mu, it is the linear mass density. Let us start the experiment. We start with the hanger, it is just 20 grams. But before, we have to write this one. Here, the frequency of that machine is 45 hertz. Now, we're starting with the mass. This is 20 grams plus the hunger, which is also 20 grams. So, the total mass is 40 grams. So, 40 divided by 1000, it is 0.04 kilogram. So, this is the first one, the first try. We start. What we do now, we need the relation between the distance between two successive nodes and the tension. So we don't change the frequency. So just we move it in front and back to get stable nodes. So just we move it front and back. Now we wait to get stable standing. Now, that are the standing waves here. Yeah, so we put the indicator down exactly. So this one is the distance between two successive nodes. So we use here the ruler to get the distance between two successive nodes. So this distance is 20, it's exactly 20 centimeters. So the distance between two successive nodes, it's a 20 centimeters. And the tension, it's a 40, 40 uh, gram. So uh, the mass is 0.04 kilogram multiplied by 10, it is 0.4 newtons. So now, what we do, we find the lambda. Lambda equals to y is the distance, but we change the centimeter to meter. It is 0.2. So this is 0.2 meter. So lambda equals to y is the distance multiplied by 2. So it is 0.4 meter squaring it. The answer is 0.16. It's better to multiply by 10. It's 1.6 times 10 power negative 1. So this is the first frame. So the frequency it is given, it is constant, 45 hertz. The mass is 0.4 kilogram. The, it is 20, 20 gram plus the hunger also 20. So the total is 40 gram divided by 1000 to be in kilogram, 0.04. Multiply by 10 to get the tension in Newton, 0.4 Newton. And this is the distance between two successive nodes. It was 20 centimeter, change it to meter 0.2. So lambda equals to y is the distance, multiplied by 2, 0.4 meter, and lambda squared 0. Now we repeat the trial by adding more 20 grams. So the total mass in the second is 0.06 kilogram, multiplied by 10, so it is 0.6 newton. Now we start, must be stable, so we are waiting to get it just move the machine in front and back to get a stable standing waves. Now, now this is the distance between two successive nodes, yes, so this is the distance between two successive nodes, so the distance is here, it's 20 it's okay. It's a 21.5. So it's a 21.5 centimeter. 0 0.22 meter. Lambda it's a twice, so multiplied by 2. So it is 0 0.43. Squaring it, 0 
0.18 so it's 1.8 into 10 power negative now the let's try we add another 20 gram the mass now is 0.08 kilogram 0.6 newton start so the distance is 29 centimeter 29 divided by 100 so it is 0.29 multiplied by 2 so 0.58 squaring it so it is 0.195 it is 1.9 into 10 power negative 1 we add more mass 20 gram the total mass 0 0.10 kilogram multiply by 10 so it's 1.0 newton we're starting it is 37 centimeter and the last try we add one more mass the total is 120 gram divided by 1000 it is 0.12 kilogram multiply by 10 it's 1.2 newton we start <coughs> the machine that is the distance between two successive ones yes. it is 36 centimeters it is 0.36 meters that are the results okay so this is the final results now we plot the graph of lambda squared and t we plot the axis the tension on x-axis and the lambda squared on y-axis so this is 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 up to the tension in Newton 0, 1, 2, 3 and multiply by 10 power negative 1 this is for lambda squared that are the points related to the results in the graph now we draw the test of the line it will be passed through the origin and in between so this is the best fit line, we find the slope. Now this is the slope, 0 0.39. Let us go back. What is the relation between the string tension and the square of the wavelengths of the standing waves? It's a direct relation. Using the slope of the line, calculate the linear mass density. So we say that mu equals 1 over the slope multiplied 1 over f squared. This is the relation. So it's 1 over the slope. We found it. It's 0 0.39. Multiply 1 over the frequency squared. It's 45 squared. So it's 1.28 into 10 power negative 3. The Newton of this one, we say it's a kilogram per meter. So this is the answer. What are the sources of error? The sources of error here, improper measurement of the distance between two successive nodes. So this is one source of error. So incorrect visual observation, incorrect visual observation of the two nodes. So that are two sources of error. What about the conclusion? Why we did this experiment? To determine the linear mass density of the string. When we do this experiment, we found that lambda squared is proportional to the tension. Lambda is the wavelength and the T is the tension in the string. So lambda squared proportional directly to the tension. So when we draw the relation between lambda squared and the T, we found that it is a straight line. By knowing that slope, we can get the linear mass density from the relation mu equals 1 over the slope multiply 1 over f squared provided that the frequency is constant i hope you understand this experiment thank you